If you have to physically trade your time for money, you will trade all your time for money and probably still. If you are not contributing to the current that is currency, right? What are you likely doing? What's going on, everybody? Welcome to TDY Faith, Family, and Finance. For those that don't know me, my name is Winnie, but you can call me Winnie. Um, and today I'm very, very excited, man. I got one of my boys with me. Um, so this this episode, I don't know where we about to go with this one, but this is going to be a good one. Uh, so this is my man. We've known each other since college, uh, and a lot has happened since then. Like I went to college, dang, 10 years ago. Right, so I started college 2014. Um, so yeah, it's been about a decade, and uh, uh, life life has lifed, and and we've come out on the other side, you know, happy. You know, we happy, we thriving, and and for those that went through the uh, rigors of NJIT, New Jersey Institute of Technology, you will know, and you will recognize that coming out of there, um, you really only have like two paths to go um and 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 we are grateful that we uh we took the successful path so our roads have brought us both to atlanta and that's why my man's is here right now uh so i would like to introduce to some and introduce to the rest my man's kojo Kojo, yo 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 what's going on thank you for coming my dog anytime anytime and then y'all not only did Kojo pull up as well, Kojo brought his mans. <laughs> now, I know I feel like I, I I understand a little bit about Kojo's personality, right? And Kojo introduces man as his best friend. So listen, this is gonna be a really good podcast, guys, because we got we got two for the price of one. So I'm gonna introduce you all to Mbafi as well. Mbafi, what's going on, bro? What's going on? Thanks for having me. It's great to be here. Absolutely, man. I'm very, very excited. I'm very, very excited about this. So Definitely. I'm gonna turn it over to y'all for real. Like, um, hey, listen, we in my, we in my crib. I we, I just shot one, so I changed my shirt. Like, you know, <laughs> we gonna we gonna pretend like this is another uh, podcast. But you know, let let's just you know, let's just vibe. You know, no script. Um, I'm going to turn it over to you first to you know, just give some context about yourself, who you are, what you do, and Bafi likewise as well, before we jump into, you know, the, the praise, prayer, and practice. So who wants to go first? Yeah, I'll go first. Um, my name is Kojo Bonahini. Um, as you guys know, when you said it before, uh, we were, both went to NJIT at the same time. I started in 2012, so I've been out of college for seven years, but started college twelve years ago. So, yeah, like I feel I feel the age creeping up on me. <laughs> it's scary, but yeah, um, went to NJIT, spent five years there, got my degree in uh, electrical engineering, and now I work consulting. And on my free time, I work on my house as well as other real estate ventures. And other than that, I also roll jujitsu. If you know, you know, and really just spend most of my time just hanging out with friends and trying to grow stronger and, and more dedicated to God. Buffy. Fire, fire. <laughs> What's going on, everyone? My name is Godfrey Buffy. I actually go by my last name, Buffy, which was said earlier. And it's interesting because I played soccer my whole life. And so my my name was in the back of my jersey. And that's why Buffy just stuck. And it's not basically like my first uh, name. But um, I played Division One soccer at Fairly Dickinson up in New Jersey, and I used to visit Kojo sometimes on campus. Never <laughs> ran into it, but it's exciting to actually kind of see things come full circle and see everybody Thanks. doing well. Um, so did undergrad in sports administration, master's in sports administration. I worked in the athletic department for about six, seven years, and then I pivoted and went into business. So finished my MBA just this May last uh, last summer. Congrats, and, uh, bro. Thank you, thank you. I started working in corporate finance, so I have to be cautious a little bit when I speak about certain financial subjects <laughs> and matter. Um, so it's been been a great, great journey. Um, and then I, you know, I spend a lot of time with family, some of the hobbies and things I enjoy. I collect vinyls. Ooh. That's one thing I love doing. I got set. Oh, you I have some? Yeah, That's yeah, what yeah. I'm talking about. Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah, so I collect vinyls. Uh, I love traveling. My goal is to get to 50 countries. I'm oh, wow. currently, I'm getting a little closer to halfway there, so it's nice. 
um, yeah, and that's about it. So really excited for this. Uh, you see what I be saying, man? I told you it was going to bring the heavy hands. <laughs> <laughs> nah, okay. So, so, so here, here's the thing, right? Like, this is what I be trying to say. Um, like, you don't need, I, I said, I said this before, like, but you don't necessarily need like a guru, uh, to, to guide you, right? You should have mentors at different stages of life. You know what I'm saying? So I have mentors that are, that I literally went to college with mm-hmm. that are maybe one to three years ahead of me. Right. And then I have the, some that are 10 to 20 years, some that are 20 to and upwards. Right. And then I also have some people that I consider mentors that are like my age as well. Mm-hmm. You can learn from anybody as long as you're willing to learn. Right. So I'm I'm excited to talk to y'all because I'm caring. I'm currently getting my MBA right now. Right. And my M, my uh, what is it? Master's in finance as well. Right. Okay. So M, MBA MSF. Um, at Auburn and I would love to hear about like what that might mean for, sure. for corporate finance for sure. and you know like I did the whole real estate investor thing Bro. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm done with it now <laughs> I, ain't doing, I ain't doing that no more but like I want to hear your journey on that as well and mm-hmm. just um, and, and all in all like we're all believers in, in, in Jesus here so like amen. you know See, you saying he said amen, like you know, that's, that's how you know. But and 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 still, like I just want to, I want it all to draw back. So I'm very, very excited for for uh, this conversation. So let's 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 just kick it off, man. Talk to me about your PPPs. Yeah, uh, <laughs> they came for you yet? <laughs> no. no, I never did the PPP loan. Hey, okay. but the other hey, PPP hey, we're talking about was yes, uh, praise, practice, and what was the other one? Prayer. Prayer. Yes. Yes. Sir. yes. So. Something that I praise um, is I would like to praise one person, and it's my wonderful girlfriend, Joanna Surratt. Yes, sir. Um, yes, sir. Over the past years, and Buffy knows this a lot, uh, it's been a journey just going through what I've been through um, in 2019, 2020. I was not who I was. And when I met this wonderful young lady, it kind of just was whenever you're in a distorted view of yourself, you bring yourself back to reality. She ushered me in there by just being herself. She gave me the space to grow. She gave me the space to be who I am. And uh, he always attests to it. He's always like, yeah, man, I can kind of see, like, you know, things are a little bit different with this individual. And she's continuously um, fostered me into becoming a wonderful person that I am now. Um, it's almost like the gardener just watering the plant. Wow. Just that. And uh, it's been it's been exceptional, her family as well. Um that was my praise. Can we, can we, can we just, <laughs> can we take a deep breath after that? <laughs> yeah, right? Let it simmer a little. <laughs> like. I'm not going to hear the end of this. <laughs> <laughs> nah, that's phenomenal, bro. That's yeah. phenomenal. And I, thank you, thank you, my sister, for Stuart and my brother. Appreciate you. <laughs> it's funny because um, when Buffy touched down, you know, we went right into different conversations about, you know, life. And, you know, she was one of the biggest topics because of, you know, where life is progressing to now. So it's just always wonderful to give her her flowers. She deserves it. Facts. Um, the next one was, <laughs> I've completely <laughs> forgotten now because I'm thinking about her. But uh, uh, Praise, prayer, and practice. Prayer, yes. Uh, my prayer is to, I always like to take a pause before I say this, but it's to continue to become a better man. And it's a very vague and generic statement because it involves so many different moving pieces. But my main focus right now is consistency, mm-hmm. consistency with uh, myself, consistency with the word, consistency with my family, consistency. And sometimes that consistency, <laughs> I can't even talk right now, but that consti- consistency can involve even time away from them so that I can build back up, relax, recharge and give them what they need when it's time. And my practice is by relaxing. Real, real quick, bro. So um, I'm itching in my seat because <laughs> you, you said a word that gets me very excited. Uh, when people say consistency, I get very excited because I learned this lesson um, not too long ago. So when when something is consistent, that means that it it's it's consistently at one level, right? Um, it can. How do I put this? Um, Something that's consistent is something that continues even if it takes pauses, yep. right? So, like, if I were to draw, like, a straight line, right, and then um, draw, like, a drop, you know, and then continue the straight line, 
that would be that would be a, a form of consistency where something is at a level uh, and it stops and starts at that level every single time. Mm-hmm. Um, something is uh, there's there's another word for that I, I think better or more accurately describes um, the the current state, right? So when we think of consistency, we should also think of constancy, mm-hmm. right? So I think a lot of people want to be consistent. Mm-hmm. But in actuality, they should be constant. What some, when something is constant, um, it continues. It doesn't start or stop, but it wavers in, in magnitude. Yeah. Right. So a, a constant thing. Right. Uh, uh, let, let me give you a, a better example. Um, me going to the gym every day. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, and and doing like Monday, I'll do my full hour, my full workout. Tuesday, I'll be exhausted. So maybe I only do half my workout. Thursday or Wednesday, Thursday, I do 60, 40 percent. Right. I I stagger. Right. That's constancy. That's me showing up every single day. Mm -hmm. Right. But giving the percentage that I have consistency says I go Monday, Wednesday and Friday. Yeah. And I do my full workout Monday, Wednesday and Friday. Mm -hmm. That's the difference between precision and accuracy. Mm -hmm. Right. So I say all of that to, to ask you, would you rather be constant or would you rather be consistent? Man, that's a great question. Um, my aspiration is constant, where it's um, you're almost like you're always representing the highest form all the time. And that's the pressure that I put on myself. But I changed the word to consistency in my daily living just so that it can give me that mental capacity to breathe Feel every you. time. That way I don't put on myself a bad look on me or like I look down on myself or I'm too hard on myself for missing a day. You know, there's some days where, man, like, work was crazy, traffic, especially in Atlanta. Oh, bro. Traffic just got you drained, so you cannot be a constant on the one thing that you're doing. So I'd rather be able to be consistent where I keep showing up. It may not be at 100%, maybe at 20%, but we're going to make it work somehow. That's constant, though. Exactly. Constant, constant is you showing up even if you're not able to give 100%. So, like, yeah, because I had this conversation with my wife like all the time, right? Like when I'm when I'm strapped with work or, you know, there's only so much of myself that I could actually give, right? Mm-hmm. And I've already low key for the foreseeable future dedicated eight hours of myself to the the man, right? <laughs> for corporate America. Like they got me for eight hours at least, right? Every time. So knowing that now I only have sixteen left in my day, mm-hmm. right? How do I divide that sixteen? in the in the way that best serves um the agenda of of like my family right which is obviously putting god first putting family second all that financially all that right um and and i think my opinion and i'm open to correction here open to interpretation and open to you know some rebuttals my opinion of that is constancy actually helps me do that a lot better Mm -hmm. right like some days i some days babe i only have three hours to give you know, yeah. this family. So other days I have 10 hours to give, right? But what I'm never going to do is never, I'm never going to have no time yeah. to give this family. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I feel like constancy is what a lot of people should strive for, but what a lot of people do is consistency. True. And, and that sometimes that doesn't cut it, at least with not with every relationship. Right. So, you got to think, I think, Perhaps maybe having a healthy blend of both or keeping both in scope mm-hmm. is definitely important because depending on what situation, circumstance, time frame, responsibility levels and everything of that nature, there are times where you might have to kind of almost interchange them a little bit and blend them. But I, I do like the distinction you made in explaining the difference between the two and why they're both actually very important. Facts. Yeah. Facts. I, facts. I like to add, too, is... Um, even in constants where like, hey, you may be showing up, you may be less than what you normally are giving. The quality of that is just as important because I just had this conversation with Joe and uh, she let me know that, you know, my time was not of high quality. I said, oh, OK, I got to change things around everything around me whenever I'm giving her the time, because unfortunately we have to spend most of our relationship over FaceTime. So I say, OK, how can I improve the time that I give to her? Okay, let me not be distracted. If I'm folding laundry, no YouTube in the background, whatever's going on. I can do one other thing, but I can't do three other things whenever I'm talking to her. So 
that's why sometimes I use the word consistency because I can also give myself that opportunity to not be as high quality for those moments, but I'm still there. It may suck because I'm just very, very, very tired, but what can you do? Flex. We're human. Yeah, literally. I think I think we, we should strive to be consistently constant. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're just blaming it. <laughs> let's, be, let's be constantly consistent or consistently constant, and uh, it'll work out. But yeah, no, I just wanted to make that, nah, I appreciate that, that distinction there. I appreciate it. I will let Buffy do his three Ps. I think you forgot. I think you have one more P. Oh, right? my practice. Oh, your practice. Yeah, practice. yeah, my practice would be um, consistency in improving the quality of the time that I put on anything. Mm. So that's jujitsu. That's my relationship. That's even whenever I call you, bro. Yeah. You know, so that we can tap in with each other or even spending time with my brother and my sister. Those are very important things to me. So flex. Love it. Love it. Fire. So praise is first one, right? So, um, I would like to definitely praise my significant other as well. Um, her name was Ludana Bazil. We've been together for quite a long time since college all the way through. And uh, we actually did get engaged last year as well. So, Sir, congrats, yeah, very bro. exciting chapter. Thank you. Um, and we built and cultivated everything together from start to finish. I mean, when we first started dating, I was in school, couldn't work much because of my, you know, curriculum and sports. And she has been somebody that's been there through every single thing over the last 10 years, right? So there are times where she's had to put her own dreams and goals and aspirations on the back burner to help support and facilitate some of the important things that we needed in the relationship, especially foundation wise out the gate. Right. So to me, she is an incredible best person I've ever come across. Beautiful person inside and out. Great with people. And I'm just glad. And thank God I'm in a position where I can return that favor and reciprocate a lot of that. Cause there's a lot of times where, you know, where if we have good people in our lives, they invest in us, right? And so they have to reap that reward. And we have to make sure that we do stand by the people that have been there for us through, and through thick and thin. So praise-wise, couldn't have been with a better person all around. Great mindset, great, great level-headed individual. Really keeps everything nice and together. So everything that people see and experience from me, it is her work. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so that's, that's praise. Point. Yeah, and then second is prayer, right? All right, so... Prayer-wise, the one thing that I think is so crucial is really a deeper understanding of time. And I think that's something that we can all benefit greatly from because time is very tricky. You know, our parents are older and stuff like that. So quality time along with that is so important. And you guys alluded to the fact that you have 24 hours in a day, maybe 16 at best because you got to sleep and then you split the rest. So what is the best way to manage and, and invest in all the important areas of your life with the little bit of time that you have each day. You know, so I, that's something I've been praying about to make sure that God gives me that wisdom, the insight to not forget to make quality time and connect with the people that matter most. So I try to call my parents as much as possible, even if it's not to say anything. It doesn't even matter, right? I try to check in on Koji as well, see how he's doing down here. Um, so I think, you know, getting a deeper understanding of time and really extrapolating life from it as much as we can before our time is up. I think that's a huge, uh, that's something that I'm actively praying on. And then that extends to practice wise. I'm somebody who is very methodical, right? Very methodical. And so, yeah, super calculating. Um, not with everything, calculating, but extremely flexible at the same time. And I understand that there's a lot of things in life and nuances. So in terms of practicing time, my goal is to be effective and efficient. All right, so effective meaning, hey, did I accomplish the goal or the experience that was, you know, the fabric of life itself that was really most empires of importance? Cool. And then efficiency meaning, okay, how am I accomplishing these things in terms of input and output? Right. So you can be effective. You can get from, say, from here to California or from Atlanta back to Jersey or something like that. Now, I can ride a bike. I can ride a horse, <laughs> right? <laughs> or I can take a plane, right? And so if you if you drive, that's going to take you, let's say, almost a full day, close to that. You're going to pay a lot of gas, a lot of money. But the most efficient way for me to maximize that time and be most efficient is to just take a quick flight, maybe a couple hundred bucks, boom, I'm there. Still have the whole day. So that's kind of how I've been practicing and using my time intentionally in the areas that I want to continue investing in. Yeah, Bro, you just, what you just said, um, 
resonates with me to the point where, <laughs> like, so the re- the reason that I the reason that it resonates with me so deeply, right, is because we're literally in the middle of shooting a podcast right now, mm. and all of this that you see is like a full investment in that principle of how can I use how how can I leverage other resources that I've been yeah. blessed with, right, to most effectively make the most use of, of my time, right? Yeah. Like by, let's just talk about this example, like in particular, right? Like I wouldn't be, we wouldn't be right here doing this without without Gerald, right? Like he, he's he's the man that's kind of making all this happen. Gerald is the, the producer, right? Like he's, he's the man that's making all of this happen. And if I were to, if I were to try and set this all up myself, it would have taken me probably six months to learn, maybe a year, Right. Mm-hmm. And then maybe another like three hours to so like the the resource or like the the, the money. Right. That, that we pay for the time back. Yep. Right. That's not necessarily a lost expense. You, you it, it could be if you don't feel like your time is worth the amount of money you spent. But for me, I would rather pay somebody to cut my lawn, somebody to do these things, right? Rather, because I know that my time when put in a, rather when put in a better performing, um, more tailored Mm -hmm. uh, direction or asset can yield a larger return that I would normally be investing. Yeah, completely agree with that. That's something I learned through business as well. And and it's interesting because everything does tie back to biblical documents, right? And so, um, it, a lot of times people, even with, with obtaining money and resources like that, right, assets and so forth, if you have to physically trade your time for money, you will trade all your time for money and probably still won't have any at the end of the day anyway, right? And so it's like, okay, what is the fastest and most more efficient ways of, you know, getting these assets so then you can use your time, as you just said, to higher frequency, more things that are more inten- that are intentional and more valuable that you can use that time for, you yeah. know, so, I, you know, I... I you know, there's only two ways in terms of financial wise. There's only two ways to make money. People at work and money at work, right? Now, money can work better than we can. You know, like he oh, just yeah. said, the same thing even with my business. You know, if I try to do all the camera work myself, if I try to do every single thing myself, whether it's bookkeeping, whether it's lawyers, making sure things is on point. If you try to do all that by yourself, you're going to spend so much time and waste so much energy. And you're going you're gonna to spend twice, 10 times as much time, three times as much resources when you have professionals and people that are qualified that can kind of shorten the gap for you and not, and then you use your time for bigger things that you care about. And isn't that the point of currency? Like currency, yeah. in, it, it, the, the, the word currency implies that it flows, right? Current, yep. Yep. right? So if you are trying to do everything yourself, Right. And you're not using your currency or your funds to empower other people. Yeah. Right. What happens? You, you're not built. You're not edifying anybody. Nothing at all. You know, like there are certain communities that, you know, are around right now that are thriving and very, very wealthy. Why? Because they do not believe in the individualism yep. that, you know, the Western culture proposes. Right. Yeah. They, they strongly believe in this cultural um how do I even describe it? But everybody is so interconnected. Yeah. Right. And they leverage each other's skill sets and they leverage each other's experiences, finances, all of that. Right. Collace it all together and they Mm. put out a product and that product, all they do is they just continue to recycle that. Why don't we do that? And I'm not, this is not like a, Oh, black people should band band together, (laughs) you know, put put our money, let's go buy land. You know, Mm. like I'm not saying that I'm just saying like as a, as an entrepreneur, Right. Or not. You don't have to be an entrepreneur just as a regular, regular person. Right. If you are not contributing to the current that is currency. Yeah. Right. What are you likely doing? You're staggering it. Mm-hmm. Like you're creating a you're creating a, a pool, a pond for yourself. Mm. Right. Where, where whatever doesn't flow. Eventually becomes stagnant. Yeah. yeah. And I'm proposing that if if you do not level up your mindset to a point where you are if you don't level up your mindset to a point where you're comfortable letting your money flow in exchange for your time, right, then you'll never actually do it and you'll never actually reach that level that the, the most successful people in the world are at right now. Yeah, I mean, to piggyback on what you were just talking about, this is going to kind of transition away from the topic, but it does tie into it. Um, everybody's trying to be the king in 
their own household. Everybody's trying to be the king in their own communities. So oftentimes people are looking to do everything by themselves, carry everything by themselves, just so that they can maintain what that title is saying. So because that happens so often, we don't see a lot of cohesiveness. Everybody wants to have their name be associated with the work rather than just the community benefiting from it. Mm. So because we have that, I see so many people not willing to work with other people because they want the credit so much. And they say that the most effective king is the one that never wanted the crown. Facts. Because they wanted to just help people way more than to actually wear the crown. Mm -hmm. And even just practically, would you rather have like an entire grape or like a slice of a watermelon? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, good point. Good like, analogy. You know, we got a lot of people that here that are like looking for grapes. Yeah. You know, looking for like apples. Like, yeah. There are bigger ones too. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, there's bigger fruit out there. Like, yeah. I would, I would rather be. The, the duke of a kingdom uh -huh. than, you know, the king of yeah. a city. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I think edu education is a big piece um, okay. to that, right? Because depending on one's background, upbringing, household experience, it, it, it shapes a lot of their decision-making or thought processes. So there's a lot of times where many of us have to unlearn and then relearn with different inputs to kind of help us cultivate that, even to get, even get to the point of being able to collaborate more um, across, it takes a long time because all of us actually live in three lives in one, right? We're, we're living a life that we were just born, we were born into it in the family, right? You don't get to just choose your family and everything else. So whatever transpired prior to you, unfortunately, some of the byproduct or the effects of that, you're feeling it and living it simultaneously now, right? And then you're also trying to build your life, live, you know, live a little bit, enjoy life, taking great experiences, but you're also planning for the long term, right? Legacy, the future. So we're living three lives in one. So first thing is to kind of give us all grace to begin with, because I mean, I know I didn't come out with an instruction manual. My parents <laughs> worked their butt off to get me in this shit, right? Um, so that's one. But we do have to be more open minded and change our psyche a bit when it comes to learning about certain subject matters that may not have came naturally to us or we didn't grow up around. And that's something that I pride myself on and being able to help and educate as many people as possible. Facts. The education element is very critical. I think oftentimes people are chasing the education of um, the, the prestige and the title way more than it's like practicality and or um, even what fits their skill set. Because I see a Ex lot. Expand of, on that a little bit. A lot of people are trying to become doctors, lawyers and engineers for the purpose of the prestige. A lot of people are trying to become this and that because that's what, you know, mom said or dad said or the culture is expecting of them. And it doesn't even fit their skill set in which they're not a very caring person. Wow. Like, how can you be a doctor if you're not caring? You know? You, you technically can. I mean, you can you can diagnose and all that fun stuff. That's you're great. You're not going to be a good one. Exactly. You know, and we need good doctors because I ain't going to lie, man, these... These hospital bills be taxing. No, I, I kid you not. But like, okay, so I'm gonna play devil's advocate because I could, I could easily see the perspective, you know, of somebody saying like, "Oh, y'all are saying that, but you an entrepreneur, and you know, you're, you know, a consultant, right. and you're in tech sales, so like, y'all are in like established careers. So how mm -hmm. you telling me that I shouldn't be doing like, you know, that I shouldn't try and establish myself in a career that's, you know, yeah. you know, uh, um, you know, that has gives you the potential to accumulate wealth." Right. What, like, so I, I could I could see somebody saying that and I'm I'm gonna let you explain, but mm -hmm. I don't I don't think what you're saying is don't go for a career because of the potential of prestige. Mm -hmm. I think what I think what you're what you're saying more is align your career with your personality because in every personality and every purpose driven work there is the potential for success mm -hmm. in that, right? Mm -hmm. um, can you talk to that a little Definitely, bit? Definitely, because sometimes your career will put you in rooms that you're not supposed to be in. And some of these rooms will make you feel uncomfortable and you believe that it's the career's the wrong choice. No, it's just a room. And unfortunately, what I would like to expand upon in that is that unfortunately, so many people see that, oh, I have to be a doctor just to become this, this, and this. Maybe you need to become a doctor so that you can pass on information about preventative medicine. You don't have to be an MD who is a um, an orthopedic surgeon. You don't have to be this person that's making a lot of money by going through this procedure. You may be the person that's really good at educating. You have the information. You have some practicality. You can then transition into an education aspect. 
for me with engineering, I knew that I like to tinker with things, be outside, fix things, but I'm not somebody that has that creative capacity to build from new. I can build a greenfield because that's standard. You know, I'm talking about my job now. I have no idea what a greenfield is. But yeah, a greenfield <laughs> station is just, you know, from the ground up. Some other people call it brownfield because the construction it looks like mud. But from a greenfield station, I can give out what the standard is supposed to be and everything, and it will be built right up. However, if somebody's asking me to become super creative with it, I'll spend way too much time overanalyzing. So me understanding my skill set, I know now to fall into things that help me solve problems rather than being the, hey, be the full creative, build something new from nothing. That's not who I am. But when I speak to the point, I'm speaking more about, hey, look, don't go just for the prestige. You can be a doctor, but you do not have to be the doctor that everybody wants to brag about. Be the doctor that's very impactful to your community. Way more than the person that, hey, you know, my auntie can drop, name drop me. At the facts, 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 facts. So it's like optimize, optimizing for impact is exactly. the goal, not necessarily optimizing for income. I had I had a similar conversation with um, with one one of my one, my OGs uh, about this, and the the conversation the, the the direction was, if we optimize for impact, the income will definitely be there, but if we optimize for income, then um, you, you might get the income, but the problem with that is with imp, without impact or without purpose or without some sort of um, drive right to achieve the next thing um, like healthily because people can have you know unhealthy drive as yeah, well right true. that comes from trauma right but without that you'll likely just roll that income into another project and once again without any in, without any impact that you're working towards it becomes a perpetual cycle you end up just continually spending continually scratching down what you built and restarting and all of that. So optimizing for impact is always the goal in anything that you do. And whenever you are impactful with whatever you do, more than likely the impact, the income will follow. It's funny, man. When I've spent the last, what, three or four years uh -huh. having to go back and <laughs> forth, you know, my real estate journey. Yeah. My real estate journey has left me in a perpetual state of like. I want to hear about this. Oh, you you really want to hear I, I want to hear about this. <laughs> okay. This brother has been through a lot. Oh, man. <laughs> so uh, 2021, I purchased my first investment property in Valdosta, Georgia. Um, I still have that one. I've had it. It was it was my first home purchase. I was excited, man. Um, really, really cool, very, very nice price at where it was. And it was, you know, right in that hump of the pandemic when everybody still didn't know what was going on. So I got a good rate. So nice. I was excited. It was coming with tenants. So I was like, hey, this is turnkey, kind of, right? Nope. Nope. Uh, that's how they get you. Right when I was signing on, one of the tenants were moving out. So I said, okay, this gives me an opportunity to invest money into it. I saw what it looked like before. I can invest money into making it better. I did. Dropped, I think, close to 30000 or something like that. Said, oof, okay, a lot of money. That's fine. Cool. Got it refurbished. Did a cash out refinance because it was about a six months after I just got that. Mm -hmm. Cash out refinance. I was able to take money back out. So the money that I put back into it, including the down payment, I was able to get back out. Okay. Wonderful. I'm so singing praises. I'm happy. So that's called a BRRRR strategy. By BRRRR the way, strategy. Just yeah. so you know. Buy, rehab, refinance, and I don't know the... Rent. 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 Yeah. yeah. Recoup. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, we're the recoup part. <laughs> <laughs> that's the other bird because the, the there's so many R's after it. Yeah, right. So that was great. But mind you, the rehab was only one unit because it's a two-unit house. The second unit was 10 times worse. Sheesh. And guess when they moved out? Right when I refinanced. Oh, for real? Yeah. So right when I refinanced, that the money I took out, and let me let me be more accurate. The money that I took out, I put it into my down payment for my current house. So I'm back at zero. So I'm thinking, okay, I got two properties under management. I'm on the right path. This is what you're supposed to do. Cool. Nope. Second set of um, people moved out. Okay. All right. That's fine. Got to invest another 30000 into the second unit. Sheesh. To rehab it, refurbish it. Yeah, that was a lot of money. So I'm like, okay, I'm cool. I'm stable. 
the house that I live in, I also bought it as a project home where I can actually put in my own work, re- refurbish it, rehab it, and everything. Anytime he would call me on FaceTime, he hears a drill in the background. I'm walking around. It's on Echo. He's at Home Depot. <laughs> <laughs> it was a lot of different things. So it just kept on teaching me so much, teaching me so much. But I started to overinvest a lot of my time into it. That started taking the quality out of everything else. Uh, I had to have multiple conversations with my lovely girlfriend about that. But she was very, very supportive. I'm, I I can't tell how many times she wants to be a painter. She's like, just hand me a paintbrush. I'll paint this. Wow. I'm like, girl, you do not know. You don't get paint stains everywhere. But, you know, it took a lot of processing. And to finish with the first property, oh, my goodness. Once we were done, then came the headaches of managing it. I had property managers down there that, were, in my eyes, they were doing a good job, but not to the expectations that I had set for them. I thought I had communicated it and also on contract it should have been that way. But I had one tenant just get evicted, had to kick them out. Oh, Another shit. tenant just left. Didn't pay nothing, just left. There's stuff there, all that stuff just left. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Another tenant was um constantly late and then they just could not keep consistency tenants and also every time I would come in to figure something out it just was not up to par there was a lot there were communications that were slow um, I always had to check the invoicing at every month to make sure that everything is correct they made so many different accounting errors it just was not this not is your relation. property manager doing property this? manager was this like your cousin that just <laughs> moved here from like no. No. this is a professional property this manager? is a professional property management company they have multiple ten, like multiple multiple units under management. In my eyes, maybe they just did not see what I was running as a priority because mm-hmm. they have many many different units, and I can understand that, you know. So I said, "Hey, we're gonna walk away from each other." I appreciate the time, so I took it under management, and I have somebody on call to be able to handle any major issues that I need to have. But yeah, no, I. So was was it was it worth it in your opinion? Yes. Okay. Yes. Why? The information that I was able to gain, not only am I able to pass that on to other people, but I still have equity. Nice. Okay. I still have equity, so you know, with the money and where it is right now, have you know, paying tenants. If I hold it for a couple more years, mm. you know, even with the gains from appreciation, it was still worth it. Right. I don't. I don't take hard lessons as a. <laughs> Oh, I'll never do it again. <laughs> I just I just now know where not to go. Facts. But yeah. Then think, my house. What, you your actual your actual house. Wait, just a really quick question on the on the investment <laughs> property first, because I kinda I kinda did the same thing. Yeah, I know. Right? What you mean, so, right. Yeah. So um the investment property, do you think that one, it would have been that tedious, um, if you like invested in like a, uh, and this is just me assuming, was it like a, a A, B, or C class property? It was definitely C class. Okay. Definitely C class. So do you think you would have had the same problems if you invested in like an A class property? Not at all. Okay. So what made what made the C class worth it? Like why was that the investment that you chose? And well, for, for can you just explain like the yeah. difference for anybody? So A class, B class, and C class are the different tiers of. Um, neighborhood i would say or the classes of housing that you purchase a class is you know high-end brand new build um or little to no issues with it and it's in a very very great neighborhood um most of them are in subdivisions outside of a city uh in a tertiary market b class are also right under that you usually have a certain group of people that are living there um white collar higher blue collar Individuals like that and C class are usually get a lot of turnover with those. Unfortunately, you have those that are working in positions that don't pay a lot of money. Students, those are the situations that you would have a lot of turnover. But each one of them has its own property, own opportunities of um, high return of rate. Now that I know everything that I've experienced with C class, it allows me to then make more strategic purchases when it comes to c-class because right now the only only good investments are in c-classes right now and some d-class in this particular market in places like montgomery um alabama mm -hmm. okay 
It's going crazy. Can I can I can I can I challenge that thought process Go for ahead, a second? Please. because uh, I just I because right now I own a an A class Wonderful. single family. Um and we have tenants in that right now. And while my return on that investment sucks, <laughs> right? The mental strain mm-hmm. from knowing that this property was built ground up in 2022 and I will literally have no problems with it for the next 25 years is I can't tell you how I sleep at night because mm. in Baltimore, I don't know. Do you remember my, my house in Baltimore? I didn't get to see it, but I remember you talking about it. Bro, it was horse manure <laughs> if I could. So like it was a it was a row home. All the other picture, you know, if you've ever been to Baltimore, picture, you know, a single family, like a, you know, like a townhouse, right? Mm-hmm. A row home. Every other house on the street was abandoned. Mm-hmm. On the other side of the street, there was one house on the corner. Every other house was abandoned. And then there was another house on the corner. Mm-hmm. Right. So that was my street. The next street over, same thing. The street before that, um, government projects. Mm-hmm. Right. So, um, I was like, oh, opportunity. Yeah, they're going to fix it up. <laughs> like, oh, you know, real estate investment. See, the strategy was there. <laughs> the, strategy, the strategy was there, bro. And and my wife, she thugged it out with me. Like, we did the whole. That's beautiful. You know, we did the whole investment thing, Airbnb thing. And the, the, the overhead of it, though, was just yeah. so exhausting that I thought to myself, I will, I will literally never do mm-hmm. this again. And, like, from then on, it was only. B or A class investments. Mm-hmm. And that's the only thing that's ever made sense for me um, mm-hmm. since then. Yeah, real estate is particularly very interesting because, and, and it's funny because he's the real estate guy. I'm more your stocks equity because I'm your laziest investor you're going to find. Talk to me, right? <laughs> Talk because to me. I, I, I mainly look at return on investment versus return on time, right? So even if you get a good return on the investment, is it going to require my time or my peace of mind? If I have to continuously put in a certain amount of effort, I'm not doing it because I'm a lazy investor. I want to eat, again, effectiveness and efficiency. I want the easiest route. So I'd rather own all the businesses, all the, pro, all, the, all the firms, all the businesses that we all spend our money on 24-7, whether we want to or not, whether we have money or not, it doesn't matter. You have to spend to live. So I'd rather be that type of landlord and just sit and collect rather than you know having to do too much movement or dealing with certain pieces. So that's kind of how I move. But it is very important. Real estate is definitely a holy grail. The equity market is definitely a holy grail. So I think maximizing both is really like a, a life hack, you know. But it, it's been nice to witness his journey through real estate. <laughs> and it's cool because I'm learning more about your, your journey through real estate as well now. Yeah, bro, I'll never do it again. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll never do it again. No more city class? No, no. <laughs> uh, no more real estate. I, I don't blame you. You know? I don't blame wow. you. Wow. Yeah. I'm very fortunate that... Um, I have a copious amount of time to invest that time capital into it because now with the information, not only can I be a great resource to somebody who is going to walk into a C-class property to tell them either not to do it or to have a lot of capital (laughs) ready to do it or to um, also make strategic decisions when I'm in my own C-class. Because I think you can can do well with C-classes if they're in the right places. Facts. Facts, facts, facts. Okay, so... I know this is not even what we're supposed to be talking about, but you it's see, all you see good, what I'm saying? Like the conversation <laughs> just goes where it goes, right? Um, okay, so I want I want you to. I always ask this question to my guests, right? Um, I, I always ask, you know, what's one thing you wish everybody knew, or one thing you wish everybody did, right? And the purpose of this is really to to find out what my guest is most passionate about, so mm-hmm. we can kind of talk through that. Mm-hmm. So I'm gonna throw the same questions out to y'all. You know, what is one thing y'all wish anybody knew, or one thing you wish everybody did? I'm about cool. to start with that. One thing I wish everybody knew is really prioritizing financial literacy and money management, right? And it doesn't matter how much money you have. It doesn't matter if you're an athlete, you're an artist, you make millions. It doesn't matter. If you don't know how to manage your resources, you will lose them all, right? And so prioritizing financial literacy, which is what my business is on, I literally educate and teach and help as many people as I possibly can. Learn about money, how it works how their money blueprint is set up, how to improve that, and how to attach those monetary stages throughout your life, how to attach that to your purpose, your goals, and your values, right? Um, Because you have to know thyself and you have to know thy why, right? It's like, why am I trading all my time for this money? 
And if it's to take care of my family or spend more quality time with them or give back to the community or enjoy experiences, if I'm trading all my time, then what time do I have to do those other things? So for me, I would say the one thing I wish everybody knew, definitely prioritize financial literacy, money management, because all the businesses that you spend your money with does it. They all do it from Amazon, from NVIDIA to Google to Meta to CVS to the <laughs> restaurants that we all go and enjoy food at, right? Uh, to the clothes that we buy, they all have to manage their resources because some things have limitations and we have to kind of learn to understand that. The thing that I wish everybody did was, for, and this is going to be for parents primarily because they have, a lot of parents won't do certain things for themselves, but it will do it for their kids, right? And so as a parent, the first thing I would encourage any parent, whether you just had a baby today or, or you, you know, your kid is... is 15, 20, doesn't matter, is the moment, ideally, the moment you have a kid, manage to come up with $5,000 and invest it in the stock market, in your S&P 500 index fund from a, for a nice little 8 to 10% over the course. All you need is $5,000. By the time that kid is 60, that 5000 turns into a million. That is assuming you don't add a penny to $5,000, right? So sometimes... Shortening that gap, some of the challenges that we face in our family dynamics, can, we can really catapult and kick it and get much closer by simply investing 5000 on behalf of the kids as soon as they're born. And that might be a little extra side hustle, a little bonus here and there, maybe a tax return, right? Just a little bit of something there, boom. And, and, and that takes a lot of it. And then life insurance, I would say, especially every parent, um, that's another way you can kind of close the gap without doing too much work, too much effort. Always have life insurance. So in terms of the 5000 definitely invest that in the stock market. It's going to grow exponentially over time due to compound interest. And you will be surprised how much that can grow, right? If you don't respect little money, forget about big money. Because we've seen people win the lottery and they, they fumble it all. We've yeah. seen money get passed down from generation to generation and they fumble it, you know. So those would be the two things, I think. It's Bro, top um, of my list, yeah. Can I can I read you something like that yeah. came to mind as soon as you said that? Mm-hmm. So I I be I told y'all like it, the Bible just speaks. Um, so e- Ecclesiastes, uh, I don't know if I say that right, but Ecclesiastes nine thirteen. All right, I'm gonna just read this. Uh, this this illustration of wisdom um, I have also seen under the sun, and it was great there to me. There was a little city with a few men in it, and a great king came against it and besieged it and built great battlements against it. But there was found in it a poor wise man, and by his wisdom, he rescued the city. All right, so he's a poor wise man who used his wisdom to rescue a city, Mm -hmm. right? Yet no man seriously remembered that poor man. But I say that wisdom is better than strength, though the poor man's wisdom is despised and his words are not heeded. Mm. Okay, so that being said, (laughs) the man was poor. He was wise. He rescued the city. But because he was poor, his words were not heeded. So when we understand the fact that like wealth is less of a um, wealth is less of like a topical need than it is actually more of a battle for influence. Right. We can kind of start seeing wealth as something not as um, how do I put this? Like when when people are trying to accumulate wealth, like when you when like how you help people accumulate their wealth, Mm -hmm. you're not helping them achieve like a vain need. Right. right? You're helping them achieve a kingdom principle need, something that they actually need to be able to influence people towards the gospel. That is true. One thing I've definitely recognized over the years of working with people is we have a difficult time understanding money and how it actually operates within our day-to-day life right so i teach people that this is not about their money it's about your life right and you can relate all the principles back to the bible all the principles that is utilized to you know gain more financial resources you can apply it to our physical health our mental health our family health our communication right um all the other areas of our life so when i teach it i don't teach it based on the corporate finance jargon the you know the the high level technical stuff. I don't teach it like that. I teach it based on life because everybody can connect to life. And I use analogies from day to day life that we all can connect to. So I think that's one of the things that's, that's before it was much harder for people to kind of understand the concepts and how it actually ties right back into everything. But I've learned to kind of teach it not based on money, based on life. And I just kind of leave it at that. Facts. Cause that's, 
that's oh. always pointing straight to, you know, being poor. If you're rich and like you live the life that you're always teaching other people. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right. So oftentimes uh, there's authenticity that comes with being. Man, I was broke. Yeah. <laughs> there's authenticity <laughs> that comes with the wealth that you're trying to pass on. So yep. just like you're talking about the poor wise man did not have an influence but a wealthy wise man, one that was wealthy in community, one that was wealthy in friends, one that was wealthy in health, one that was wealthy even in riches, paper money, assets, whatever the case may be, would have had influence where immediately they would have been able to be impactful. It's kind of sad though, but why is it like that, right? It's like you catch more bees with honey, right? And so it's like when you kind of portray a certain lifestyle, certain experience, once people see, they're like, oh, wow, okay, I like that. How did you get that? And then you can plant the seed, right? But I, I wish we were a little bit more um, focused on the actual important pieces rather than what it looks to be, like what the importance looks like, right? Because right. a lot of people think the wealth is the money piece, and it's not. It's really the knowledge, the skill sets to build on top of everything that is already here and, and contribute to life and society at a higher level. So I, I wish we, we, we kind of did a better job with I that. Just, I just talked about this, too. Like, the people see the wealth. They see the, the, the flex, right? And, yep. and they, you know how the Bible says, like, buy your fruits, you, you know, you shall know them. Like, and people think that fruit is, like, results, mm -hmm. whereas fruit is actually character traits, mm -hmm. right? Like, when they say fruits, we're referring to, like, the fruits of the Holy Spirit, right? So peace, jo love, joy, um, temperance, all of that stuff, right? So I don't know why people see like a car and it's like, oh, maybe I should listen. Like, do y'all remember like this whole debate on social media? Like, oh, would you rather have dinner with Jay-Z? Yeah. Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bro, <laughs> I got so mad every time I saw that. I'm like, these niggas is not serious. What are you <laughs> talking about? But then, then like, it, it, it dawned on me, like, mm -hmm. he is, he is the rich, dumb man, you know, not the poor, white. like the poor wise yeah. man is, like, I could probably go to some small churches in Atlanta right now pull some like regular degular dudes out of them services, some regular degular pastors, right? And they will have actual keys, right? Um, and it sucks though, because even though this man was wise, he was poor, mm -hmm. which means you could have the key, but not exercise it. And you mm -hmm. still, your, your, your physical state will still reflect, right? Um, where your physical state will not reflect where your mind is mm -hmm. because you haven't actually stepped out and taken that chance, right? You haven't actually stepped out and applied what you know, Right. So while you can be wise, you can also be poor. Yeah. But in the same sense, you can also be dumb and be rich. Yeah. People will rather rich listen to a, a, a rich, dumb person than a poor, mm -hmm. wise person. Yeah. I've noticed throughout a lot of different areas of just life in general, if one tends to have a long term perspective on life or have some exercise, some patience. Right. And think long term. OK. It, based on certain actions and decisions and attributes. You can kind of, like, I kind of live backwards. It's very interesting. I live, like, okay, the next generation, then my retirement, then all the way down, right? And so because of that, when I'm making decisions, I let my priority, my priorities, right, my, my faith, my family, the things that really matter to me that are noble, my why, those are the things that guide me, and that's what makes my decisions. So I learn to take self out of my decision-making, so I let those things make the choices for me, and I don't argue with it. I don't. Like, oh, but, you know, nah, I don't do none of that because that hasn't failed me yet. Facts. You know, and I'm just like, well, it's working. So this is the crap <laughs> supposed to be on, you know. So facts, facts. And when you build your why on the pillars of biblical principles and God's principles, it's almost not even it's almost it is God speaking to through you to say, hey, look, this is what the plan is. And I want you to stick to it, you know, and to kind of say what. My part was with the uh, what, what do I what do I um, believe should, everybody mm -hmm. should know and what they should do. I think God exists in between the silences, in between our thoughts. You know, whenever you're thinking of something, that brief moment in between is when God is. And sometimes a lot of people do not pay attention or know. take time. <laughs> yeah, the Bible talking right now. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think a lot of people take the time to recognize that God sits in between those two thoughts. And I've been somebody who's dealt with panic attacks and I started to realize that God is in between those thoughts whenever I gave myself the opportunity to really just stop and listen to him. Sometimes he's saying, hey, look, you need to get out of this situation or hey, look, you'll be fine. Whatever situation that you're in right now, it's not ideal, but you're going to get out of it. Just give some time. Can I, can I read this verse yeah. real quick? Oh, yeah, man. The, the Bible uh, talking. Ephesians 3.20 
Uh, now to him who is able to do abundantly more that you can dare ask or think mm -hmm. according to his power that is at work in us, which means that at all times, two things are in co communication with God, mm -hmm. right? Our words and our thoughts, mm -hmm. right? So it's not enough to just speak it, right, into existence. It's also what you're thinking into existence as well. As, as a matter of fact, you know, you know, the, the Bible be yeah, it's spitting. Right? It, it const <laughs> it, it's constantly spitting. It's constantly spitting. Here, here let, let me let me show y'all something else. Um, uh, let me see. Uh, oh, while you look for it, man, um, what I wanted to add to it was to connect it to what you're talking about. And people setting up for the next and future generations. Mm. You're setting up and building for the next and future generations, and you're building it on biblical principles. Your kids are going to benefit from the love that God is like feeding through you for the next generation. And there's a lot of people, unfortunately, growing up in um, Christian households that were built on certain people gaining advantages over you, certain pastors being, uh, um, not trustworthy individuals. <laughs> Unfortunately, I had to deal with a lot of that when I was growing up. Mm -hmm. um, there are a lot of people that built those principles on shaky grounds because they were being lied to. And that really, that's a major church hurt. Good you, point. Yeah, that's Good a point. Because sometimes the environment, you sometimes in your heart of heart, mind of mind, you, you're trying to do the right things and you, you assume that you're being led by the right people mm -hmm. in your community it's not until later on many of us grow up and realize oh my gosh like you know sometimes the intentions were good sometimes there were just other you know um things attached to it but it's like we have to also decipher mm -hmm. and analyze things and analyze life and the people the environment we're around right the mm -hmm. professions we go into like you guys touched on much earlier like you can be in a room and you're in the wrong room, but you're in there because of your profession it's not mm -hmm. that the profession is wrong it's just some the people in that room may not, quote unquote, morally be aligned with what matters to you, right? So I think that's where many people have a difficult time in making certain decisions because if you are at the bottom of the food chain, for lack mm -hmm. of a better word, right, mm -hmm. and you depend on all the apex, I want to use the apex predator in terms of like, you know, like a jungle, you know, a lion <laughs> hunting somebody, but it's the haves and the have-nots, right? And so until you give yourself a lot of flexibility or room to where you don't 100% depend on somebody else to kind of make sure, hey, like you can live day to day, mm -hmm. then it's easier to exercise more of the things that you, you want to embody and really mm -hmm. be able to display. Because some people have a tough time even talking about God, like outside of their home, mm -hmm. right? And that's because if they step out and they might say something and somebody don't agree with it, now it's a problem. Now you're on TikTok. Now you go viral and <laughs> yeah, it yeah, can get, yeah. it's it can, even it worse go downhill. You, it's even worse when you're like building your relationship with God in a community that was so judgmental. That like whenever you want to have a discourse where as a child you are looking to be taught because not even looking to be taught, you're looking to be corrected, but with grace and you're not given that because of the environment that you grew <laughs> up in where it's like tough on you all the time. You have to follow things. It doesn't allow you to draw that connection. So how can you build on what you're talking about and how people need to set up things for the next future if it's not under the right Biblical principle. So, I mean, that the church hurt point, you know, that's something that I wanted to tell people because I was church hurt really badly. And it took me a while for me to get to, you know, getting closer and closer to God. And again, thank you, Joanna Surratt. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's these things that continue to lead you to these like points of life. And you have to, have to, have to give yourself that time in between the thoughts. Can I, can I, uh, so I thank you for, I, I found it. Um, so, so th thank you for bringing that up because, um, man, this is this is so crazy. So, y'all remember the story of Job, right? Yes. How um, you know the angels came and they assembled, and the devil was there as well. And, and he's like, God is like, look at my servant Job. He's such a great you know person. And, and the devil was like, you know, that's because you've given him everything. You know, take it all away, and he'll definitely curse you. And God's like, go go for it. Try it out. Right, go see if you can. Um, so the devil afflicts Job, kills his kids, kills all his stuff. Right, and then this is what Job says in in chapter three, um, verse verse twenty uh, twenty four. Uh, he says, "For my groanings come 
at the sight of my food and my cries are poured out like water for the thing which I greatly fear comes upon me and that of which I am afraid of has come upon me. Right. So I ask, how did the devil know what to tackle? Like, how did the devil know what to attack with Job? He looked at he looked at the things that people valued most. It's in the fear, the world. bro. Yeah, it was the fear. Mm -hmm. So it's like when you think about what fear is, fear is focusing on what on what might happen. Right. Fear is focusing on the lack. Fear is focusing on the potential bad. Mm -hmm. Right. And not necessarily focusing on the what is right now. You're you're using stamina. You're using energy to focus on what might happen rather than what is happening. Mm -hmm. All right. And what two things are in constant communication with God? our thoughts and our words, mm -hmm. right? So the same way that we speak something negative, we can also think something negative into existence. Yeah, And we almost see that with Job right here because that was clearly his biggest fears, right? Everything that happened to him was his fears. So, right, so, so whenever we, like, when I used to struggle with, like, fear a lot, mm -hmm. I kept just telling myself, like, I can't give ammunition to the enemy, Right. Like I had to refute it with something and and me encouraging myself like through that, through out of that season. And obviously, you know, uh, staying in godly community, um, seeking, you know, professional therapy and all that kind of helped me get mm -hmm. through that. But uh, yeah, that, that, that just came to mind when you were talking about the you know thoughts and, and, and fears. There's, go ahead. You, you go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, all, right, all right. Cool. <laughs> um, I wanted to talk about the therapy thing because. I am a huge advocate for therapy. However, I also tell people don't go into it unless you're ready because you have to be willing and ready to listen to all the uncomfortable truths about yourself before you even start the work associated with that. And I've been in therapy um, since college, really. Like it was on and off since mm. college. But I went really, really into it in uh, 2019. You know, I really had to pull myself out of the darkness that I was in. But to get there, man, 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 man. Because you will go through your own Job um, journey, yeah. journey multiple times in your life. Facts. Where you'll be looking at God like, hey, yo, what, what happened, my boy? Yeah. <laughs> Why did you allow that to happen? Yeah. yeah. And that's the tough part, too, because, like, you know, like, as Christians, we know that God is omnipresent, all-powerful. Like, you know that nothing happens without his Knowledge. approval, mm -hmm. right? So... That's why people like that's why the, the, the trick of the enemy is to question the character of God. Like, is yeah. he really good? Because if he was good, how could he let that happen to you? Mm -hmm. yep. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Everyone gets tested. You know, and I think that's part of God's way of I feel like sometimes it's part of the way of being tested to the point where it's like, OK, are you really about it or are you just kind of saying you're doing the actions and the walk and the practice for real? So, you know, in terms of fear, the devil attacking fear. Many of us have anxiety, fear of the uncertain, right? Like, we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. If I did this or tried this, what if it doesn't work, right? But what if it does, you know? And so there's a book that I read. It's called The Power of Nine. I can't remember the author name, but the book is called Eckhart The Power Tolle. of Nine. Perfect. What was the book? The Power, Power of Now. Eckhart Tolle. Okay. Yeah. And it's really about being present in the now as opposed to being too bugged out about, about say, past experiences that's happened that you think is going to be continuing or happening again. And it pulls you away from also looking, being stuck in the future or thinking about the next, the next thing or what's going to happen, what's not going to happen. And it literally sets you here now, present. Like you said, thoughts and words, and it, it puts you right back in present. So I realized that by being present, that's the only time you actually have, right? Because the future, it hasn't happened yet. Like you yeah. said, you know, yeah. some of these things in the past is already gone, but... Now is all we have, right? And so it's like, if you can be present, if you can really be one with your thoughts, one with the word, and exercise that consciously, before we know it, now is going to be, you know, when tomorrow gets here, it's still going to be now, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> so now is all we have. So being present now, that's such a life hack. And that's helped me develop a lot of patience too. So, so I also talk to me about, um, we're we going we gonna to do this little segment that I call like, if I were a boy, if I were a girl, mm -hmm. right? So, the, the, the premise behind this is um, how, how would you distill this entire conversation in two sentences um, to a 10-year-old version of yourself? And I want y'all to talk to a younger version of yourselves because 
everybody experiences childhood trauma, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? Which means that um, all adults either are traumatizing our kids or our kids are just naturally soft and receive trauma easily, right? So I want you guys to speak to that uh, in yourselves. How would you distill everything that we've talked about? You got two sentences, two sentences to a 10-year-old version of yourself. Mm. Who wants to go first? I'll, I'll go first. I'll take a stab at it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Prioritize the priorities. Spend major time on major things. Sorry. Right. And, and that encompasses a lot. And it's, it's hard because, it's, and I feel like that's one of the hardest things. I'm not a parent yet, but I can picture what is so hard for a parent with full life experience to try and, and fit the appropriate amount of information into, let's say, a 10-year-old that may not fully be there yet, right? So, it's like, how do you go about that? But prioritize the priorities and uh, spend major time on major things. And in doing that, most things right, will take care of itself and you would do well. You would be a good asset to your family, to your community, to your faith. So I think those, that would be my two things I'll leave them with, yeah. Thanks. This is my camera right here? That's your camera. All right, cool. I'll tell him, young Kojo, you are not the result of the things that you've done or the things that you're striving for, but your process encapsulates your character. So figure out how you want to work on your character so that you can go through the process. And the results will be what they may. Wow. Hey, I can expand upon that because as a kid, I still do that today. I know. Yeah. I, know. I, mean, <laughs> I still do it today. Sometimes I, I make sure he... Yeah, he, he, I hold he, myself... flex on it. Yeah. I hold myself a lot to the results that yes. comes from my actions. And I've had to learn that I am not the result. Sometimes a loss is a loss. You know, sometimes a win is a win. Most of the time, it's what I do. So I am the process, and my character is exemplary of the process. So I got to stick to that. Facts. And I think if 10-year-old him would have had that, maybe his hair would have been <laughs> too far back. <laughs> <laughs> he would have gray hair already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's that, tough, uh, man. What, 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 two, what, would you be, what would be your two cents? Um, I, I tell a 10-year-old version of myself to... Uh, stick with God, keep reading this, keep reading this Bible, and to um, buy Bitcoin. I'm, I'm <laughs> tell my ten year old self to drop out of fifth grade and, and, buy and go buy Bitcoin. I would have right told him buy property, man. Yeah. Nah, but listen, nah. y'all, I appreciate the time, man. Of this course. was a, a great conversation. Thank you guys for coming through. We got to do this again sometime. For sure, pleasure. Um, Thanks for having us. Where, where can anybody, you know, find out a little bit more information about you guys? Oh man, so I'm on all major uh, platforms, social media, so. I'm on Twitter, uh, Facebook, Instagram. Um, my, my handle is at Black Tycoon Talk. And so you can follow me there on Instagram. I also have a YouTube channel, which I kicked off recently, not too long ago. We're already, close, we're already at basically 2,000 subscribers right now, which is nice. impressive. Um, and and my, my work is really centered around you know, financial literacy, money management, stock market investing, blending all of those information, both from the Bible and from you know our education system and things we learned into our lifestyle, including our physical health, mental health, right, nutrition, what we input in our body, the people we surround ourselves with, and also just enjoying the life experience, right? Not everything is meant to be understood, but everything is meant to be experienced. And you can do things in moderation with a healthy balance. You can still have fun. You can still travel. You can save. You can get rid of bad debt. You can invest. And so, yeah, I'll leave it at that. So, yeah, definitely give me a follow <laughs> Yeah, you guys can find me on Instagram at Bonahini Enterprises. Uh, you might need to spell that out. For yeah, yeah, I'm all right. <laughs> but uh, Bonahini Enterprises, all one word on Instagram. That's hey. mostly where I'm at. Thank you, y'all. Thank you. Yeah, we'll put all that information down in the, in the description and all that. But yeah, once again, I appreciate you guys. Thanks for watching uh, the, another episode of The Driven Youth, Faith, Family, and Finance. I want y'all to continue being inspired to grow in those areas every day. Love you guys. Thank you.